Hello, everybody, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 5 of the Training Arc Podcast. If you didn't know, each and every week the two of us read through two volumes of Tokyo Ghoul, then sit down on this channel and review it. I'm your host, Hoodie, that is my co-host, Zero, and this is Training Arc. Uh, you didn't introduce Vader. <laughs> and that's Vader. <laughs> If you're watching this as it goes up live on YouTube, then consider heading on over to patreon.com slash k2it and pledging a couple bucks to get the next episode early. All right, Zero, before you hit us with a summary of what we just read, I got a couple things. First is, I did go through the comments last week. I see, I see what you're saying. I see all of you talking about it. Yes, we missed something. I now know what it is. However, I have not told Zero what it was. Instead, what I did... Because I have some hesitance about how obvious you seem to think it is. I had Zero reread the last couple chapters. I told him to be on the lookout for something we missed, but I did not tell him what it was. And my 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 goal was, if he found it out, then okay, we're big dummies, and we should have realized it, and we'll talk about it here. However, if he doesn't find it out, if he doesn't figure out what it was, which he didn't, then I think we are perfectly justified and it's perfectly reasonable for us to have not made the connection that you guys think we should have made. So Zero, you read the chapters, you did not piece anything together, correct? Uh, I did piece something together when rereading it, but not the thing that, uh, you, that we supposedly missed. And I didn't read the comments yeah. either, so I still don't know what it is. Yeah, uh, so... Again, we he, he I didn't tell him what it was. So in from now on in the comments until we figure it out through the actual until we bring it up here, just assume uh, we we don't know what it is. No spoilers. Uh, all safe. What is the thing you figured out? Uh, I'll uh, get to it in the summary. Okay. All right. Now before we jump to the summary, I have one more thing. Now. The title of this video is going to be Hoodie is Ro or Hoodie was right again. So I thought it'd be fun if I went through all the old episodes, which took a long, long time. Uh, uh, not many of them, but they're all an hour long. That was a big waste of my time, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, I went through and I've collected every single theory I've made thus far. Oh, excellent! And <laughs> excellent. <laughs> I have it all written on this little whiteboard right here that I uh, zero can't see, so I will read it. So it's um. I, I didn't number them, but we have metal beams, which is uh, I made in the first episode where I said, I don't think these were an accident because metal beams don't just fall from the sky. Then I have the doctor theory, and you'll see over here the doctor theory part two. So the first doctor theory was just that the doctor is in on it somehow. The second doctor theory is where I get a little more specific. The next theory is Kaneki can't eat Hide. So that, that was based on my theory that was... Um, this story will, like, one of the climaxes of this story will be Kaneki, like, submitting to his ghoul side and feeling the impulse to eat his best friend Hide. But, you know, the, the dilemma of ghoul versus human is going to be whether or not he could fight off that urge. That's unconfirmed yet. Uh, the next one, Mato is a ghoul. All right. Uh, the next one, <laughs> time skip into, into Hide being CCG. The next one, Juzo is a ghoul slash Mato's child. Sugar cubes, which was um, less of a, it was, it was kind of a vague theory, just that I felt like the sugar cubes should be something. You I didn't thought know they what were going to be would something be. insidious. Yeah, I thought there's, it, it, hey, it still could be. I'm not, okay, so I'm going to, okay, the last one is, again, Doctor Part 2. So I'm going to go through the ones that I've already, you know, have, have or have not been, or rather, have been confirmed one way or the other. And I'm just going to give myself a score on <laughs> 1 to 10, or 0 to 10. Okay. So zero, zero is Me. I. <laughs> zero is one hundred percent. I got it wrong. Let's say five is kind of right. Let's say seven is right and ten is super right. Now normally I would just say ten is right, but one of these I was super right on. So I'm gonna give that one a ten. <laughs> okay. So that's metal beams. I, I would say that that is right uh, because there is an upper limit. I'm gonna go ahead and put that one as an eight. You know, actually, no, I'll do seven because it was a bit vague. You know, I didn't say who I, I didn't say Wasn't that there someone specifically a panel did. of someone like standing on a building looking all shadowy. Not in the first chapter. When we learn or when they when Kaneki is told that someone did do it, we see a panel of someone standing up there. Uh, but OK, OK. At, at the time of the guest, 
we did not see that. So I'm going to go ahead and because I was a little vague, I'm not going to give myself anything higher than a seven, but I am going to put seven because I, I was right. So that, that's a seven out of ten right there. That's a, that's a seven. The doctor theory. The doctor theory. I'm going to give myself a straight eight. Be, now, I would just say a seven, but because one doubted me. Because <laughs> our good friend one in the comment section said, "I don't think this is it." I feel like gloating a little bit. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give that one an eight. That, that deserves an eight. Um, Maybe even a nine. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. Well, here's a spoiler. I'm gonna give Doctor Part Two a ten. So oh, okay. That's okay. why I'm being a little liberal <laughs> with this, or rather uh, conservative. Right. Um, Kaneki can't eat Hide. That's that's yet to be confirmed. That still could happen. Uh, Mato is a ghoul. All right. All right, guys, that's a zero. That's a zero. <laughs> yeah, he, I'll, I'll be honest there. Hey, we don't. We no one bats a hundred, you know, or a thousand. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know batting averages. <laughs> now, uh, time skip isn't Hide. Uh, time skip into Hide being CCG. I mean that that I got that one pretty like fucking. I nailed it. Okay, so here's the here's the tricky part. <laughs> I did specifically say this wouldn't happen. But I also gave all of the details. Like, I, I 100% gave, like, a perfect, accurate summary as if I knew exactly what would happen. I said it all right there. And then at the end, I tagged, eh, but it won't happen. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, l- l- let's consult on this. What do you think? On a, on a scale of 0 to 10, where do you think that is? I'll say it's it's kind of a tough call because your actual prediction was wrong. But you still, like... You read the story like a book. Uh, that's a t- bad time to use that expression. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, I would give I, it. Okay. I'd give it a four. So a seven. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Juzo is a ghoul slash Mato's child. Now, some may say this was entirely wrong. And in a certain light, they could be correct. I'm going to give myself a three. Because, you know, yeah, Juzo doesn't seem to be a ghoul. That could still be confirmed. I, I could I could adjust this later whether or not Juzo is a ghoul, but does not seem to be a ghoul and is not Mato's child as far as we know. However, we were introduced to Mato's child, so like I was, I was like kind of on the right track there. You know what I'm saying? So I think listen, if five is kind of right, this wasn't even kind of right, but it wasn't 100 percent wrong. So. That one's going to be a three. Sugar cubes, that's yet to be confirmed. So I'm going to leave that blank along with the Kaneki Can't Eat Hide. Now, here's the big one. This is the one we're going to talk about during the summary. Doctor Part 2, that's a 10. I mean, that, that's a fucking 10 right there. That's a straight up 10 out of 10 because holy shit did I nail that one. Now, well, okay. Maybe it's a 9. Well, okay. If you, if you remember my specific theory, it was that this is when I got super specific. I think it was last episode. I said... We're going to meet the doctor. He's going to be a ghoul sympathizer. And he's going to have intentionally put ghoul organs inside Kaneki and with the moral framework of being like, a, you know, the ends justify the means. And Kaneki is going to have a scene. I said this. Kaneki is going to have a scene where he's like, you know, look what you did to me. You ruined my life. And the doctor is going to be like, I had to do what I had to do. Now, I was, <sighs> I was really fucking close. So close. I basically had it. I did not, not, he's not necessarily a ghoul sympathizer. He's kind of like, you know, I, I, I think ghouls are the superior race and we should all be ghouls. So, you know, I could see an argument for a nine, but I'm going to keep that one as a 10 too. So <laughs> all in all, <laughs> I'm batting pretty well here. If we just, if we just pull up the average, 7, 8, 15, uh, 22, 32 out of, divided by uh, 5, I mean that's 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 a passing grade right there. That's a six. That's sixty uh, sixty plus percent. So I th- I think I did pretty good. <laughs> and, that, and there's still two more. There's still two more. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Uh, we will continue to update that in the next. Uh, I believe there's probably like two episodes left of this podcast of this uh this season. So I will continue to update that as we go. Plus I have I have another theory to add on there for later. You can see there's a lot of blank space on there. I'm putting <laughs> another one on. All right, zero. Hit us with that summary. Of course, my friend. So we open up on some kind of promotion ceremony, and you know hoodie was right. This a uh, six month time skip. We find out that uh, oh, I, it, hmm? I guess that could have counted as like a plus, 
a little bit more because that that was like a, a an addendum to another theory. I guess kind of it was it was it was it was a separate theory that was kind of a tag on to a different theory. So you know what? I'm gonna go back on here and I'm gonna add just not even gonna add another theory. Just gonna put a plus two, <laughs> plus two to whatever it is. There we go. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, so we found out that during the raid in last week's episode, uh, some of Algeria's top executives infiltrated some ghoul prison in the twenty third ward called Kokuria, which I assume didn't even exist because they seemingly kill ghouls on site anyway. But uh, apparently now there are more. Uh, many very dangerous SS ghouls on the streets, and Amon's getting promoted to top class investigator, which confusingly isn't the top class an investigator can receive. And everyone's pretty impressed that he's such a high rank at 27, but he's more impressed by Juzo, who's getting promoted to second class, uh, two ranks lower than Amon, because uh, he kind of sees him as like similar to Arima in how insanely talented he is and you know we've seen him in action he's definitely quite sh- and strong just a just a clarification on who arima is so uh as a note on some of the comments last week i did i get i got a strong plea which was that hoodie please please whatever you do i understand why this story would be super boring to you but please <laughs> do not skim anything and what am I but a river to my people? I am a merciful God. Of course. I say to you, all right, I'll try. <laughs> I'll, I'll try not to skim things. <laughs> so one of the things I did skim last week was the fact that, you know, the whole owl fight. They did talk about this guy who was able to best the owl and who, like, uh, ten other people couldn't do it, but he did it by himself. So that 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 is Arima. Uh, and here we see him here as a, a pretty cool dude. Yeah. So... He was the only other person who ever got promoted to second class as quickly as Suzia, according to Amon. So, that's pretty... I mean, he's already younger than an investigator should be at a rookie level. But I guess he's just, you know, Itachi. So, we find out Mato's will included... You know, I was... Hold on. Hmm? Pause real quick. I was having a conversation with... Well, really, I wasn't having it. I was just sort of witnessing it. But Silly Willy and uh, Brian were talking in the Discord last night about uh, villain groups. And it was it was brought up that, like, Phantom Troop is the best villain group. And people were like, you know, I, I asked who even else was on the table. And, you know, Brian was like, you know, if, if Naruto was better written, then Yukatsuki would totally be there. And Silly Willy made the claim that uh, no one in the Yukatsuki is even a good villain. Hmm. That is interesting. <laughs> what a what a what a what a disrespectful thing to say. That is what a, that's a very silly willy comment. <laughs> what a rude thing to to say about my boy Atachi, which is why I brought that up. Atachi is the best anime character in existence. <laughs> oh boy. Here come the Uchiha <laughs> fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> I dyed my irises red because I love Itachi so much. Anyways. I mean, who didn't have the uh, Akatsuki headband? I really wanted a, a Naruto headband. I remember being a kid and like seeing them online and desperately, desperately wanting to buy them. And there was even the same site I was looking at had like a kunai that was a pen which is dumb that's terrible because you can't that's not comfortable like you yeah. can't hold a kunai like that but i wanted it so bad <laughs> i just love naruto so much i'm the Me biggest too. naruto fan in the world you remember uh our friend ben and yeah i remember one time i went to his house to show him my new naruto headband and <laughs> all the way home i got so lost i was literally walking for like three hours before i just stopped at a 7-eleven and called my mom to pick me up <laughs> what does that have to do with the headband <laughs> it was uh i remember like Wearing the headband all the way to Ben's house, like hell yeah, he's gonna be so happy about this. And yeah, then, how old? Let, let's for the audience. How old were you? Uh, this was last year. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, it, it was. Um, I want to say sixth grade. Not sure. Maybe so, been seventh. Okay, that's like that's definitely 
not cool, but it's not like the worst thing in the world. You are still <laughs> a, like a little kid, yeah. But it's it's definitely you're not cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, come on. <laughs> I would I, w- I would potentially argue anywhere above third grade. <laughs> You're probably not cool if you're wearing... You know what? <laughs> Anywhere where you've since started elementary school, I think you got to stop wearing the Naruto headband. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh... Where were we? All right. Um, just got promoted. Special class investigator Arima shows up to congratulate Aman and Suzia who apparently knows him from a previous raid of a ghoul hidey hole called Operation Whack-A-Mole, so named because the ghoul sect was based in an underground labyrinth of sorts. Uh, It was apparently a pretty high-level operation since Arima and Shinohara were there, and it seems like a lot of investigators died, at least one that was named. Uh, Suzia, he's he's got some uh, interesting stripes on his belt. So, <clears throat> yeah, they they end their little uh, promotion ceremony, but the most interesting piece of information comes when Amon visits Mato's grave, and he meets his future subordinate, Mato's own daughter, Akira. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was my theory with uh with Juzo, which was that like. I the reason I thought it might have been Mato's child was because I thought Mato was the type of dude who would raise his child from a very early age to kill ghouls. And I was right. I was 100% <laughs> right about that. I just didn't, you know, I just didn't think there would be another new character because I mean, who would have predicted that we'd get so many new characters <laughs> these two boys? <laughs> yeah. Who could have thought? So I that that's why that's why I I, I gave myself a little 3 there. So, but you know, I wasn't I wasn't one hundred percent right, but the reasoning was solid. But I, I do like this girl. Uh, we she's sort of like, um, unlike her father, she's a little more uh, calculated, but she's still clearly fucked in the head. You know, <laughs> like she's still she's still got a couple screws loose, just in a way that like is less. You know, I'm a crazy mad scientist type person. Yeah, more like sociopathic than psychotic, like her father. Yeah. So and there was um there was a uh a, a end of chapter little comic that they did where it was like showing her uh you know just like a little gag comic it was showing her upbringing which I thought was actually really really sweet I don't know if it's been confirmed whether or not Mato's wife died or her uh, her mother but there's like a couple scenes where you know she's she's like asking uh asking him to like you know do her hair and all that and he can't do it as well but you know she just she's clearly just is is treasuring the bonding time and doesn't really care about that and i thought that was all fairly sweet yeah there there were some sweet little comics of uh, the two of them did you lose your place i kind of did <laughs> uh we had just met her at the grave i jumped out a little bit oh uh, right so the next day when they returned to work Akira shows her fa- shows she has her father's intuition with her con- uh, contributions to the ghoul, uh, gourmet ghoul investigation specifically. But when Amon asks her to use honorifics with his name, she basically says, "No, bitch. Being polite is a waste of time." Uh, <laughs> Which it's not. It's not. <laughs> I mean, there's. I mean, she I get made it. a good you know case. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> Point we're all strapped seconds. for time come on i get it you know we all there's we all wish there was more hours in the day uh just adding the word like uh san or whatever the uh, pr- appropriate honorific would be is so so quick <laughs> <laughs> the quickest thing in the world <laughs> it took more time it took more time to explain why not to do it than to just have done it for a full year probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably honestly but yeah uh, this was later explained as like just being her way of fucking with him, which I prefer to the actual explanation of her thinking this is just super efficient. I don't know. That's what they said, but I don't think that's true. I think she is one hundred percent serious. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she goes on that a uh, little tangent about her cool backpack later. 
Yeah, well, I, well, that doesn't. I, I think, I think she means it. I just think she's kind of dumb, and, and not like a, <laughs> not like a, not intelligent because she's clearly very intelligent. But like, I think she's just st- stupid, <laughs> I don't know. and and Is I'm also stupid for, for not being able to come up with a better word. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll see. And and to her credit. She did look pretty cool with the backpack. I mean, that was a swaggy <laughs> ass kid. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had that much swag when I was a grade schooler. <laughs> I was fucking playing Naruto. So, <clears throat> Amon talks to Shinohara about how to deal with his unruly subordinate. He basically tells him to just spend time with her, and it'll all shake out. Pretty big advice. More specifically, he says to uh, take her to a restaurant when she does something good. Which, you know, that seems like a good idea. So Amon and Akira go to uh, raid the ghoul restaurant. But when they get there, all the ghouls are dead. And Akira believes the the gourmet ghoul was responsible. But Amon's convinced that the ghouls were killed by Akagane like eye patches. In part because there's a kink lying cut in half on the ground. And he's like, huh, that looks kind of familiar. I've had that happen to me before, but really, who hasn't? <laughs> Most doves, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so as they're finishing up their reports or whatever back at the office, Amon asks Akira if she wants to get dinner, and she declines with no hesitation because she doesn't eat after 9 p.m., apparently, and she just walks out. Uh, okay. <laughs> the way she phrases it, maybe this is a Japanese thing, but she says, I am a, or I think, am I misremembering? I am a woman after all, is what she says? Yeah, she does say something like that. Is there some sort of, uh, you know, gremlin type stigma with <laughs> Japanese women that it's like, you can't feed them after 9 p.m.? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. They turn into tentacle monsters. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Su- Suzia and Shinohara are picking up his new kink at the CCG laboratory in the first ward, where they meet Dr. Mike Guy, and he explains some uh, very interesting information about how Kaganes work and how they differ from kinks, and he gives Suzia his new kink. It's a weird uh, scythe sort of thing with, like, a corner cut out of it and it's in an l shape it's whatever it's cool looking enough i guess (laughs) it is it is a little weird and uh she does name it or rather he does name it um i still i still mess up with that me too Um, (laughs) he does name it jason off of the idea that a lot of people apparently will name their their kinks after like a specific uh target or prey um, mm. And she was technically the one who who put the killing blow on Jason. Indeed. Now, but this does give me a bit of um, a bit of pause because this whole couple of chapters that we've just read put a lot of emphasis on Jason. You know, like <laughs> as if he was really, really important. Yeah, and he wasn't, <laughs> or rather, I didn't, I didn't think he was. Yeah, I, I didn't buy I'd... into it at the time, and I still don't. Because <laughs> we get so we get this where it's named Jason, and then we also get Nico, which is like Jason's boyfriend or like slave or something. I don't know. And then there's also a new guy named Naki introduced, yeah, who is just a Jason fanboy. Yeah, and I just I don't get why because <laughs> Jason to me was just another one of the ghouls at yeah. like Algier. He wasn't even like the top ghoul. He was just. Uh, a right hand man, a uh, right hand man of the top ghoul, alongside like three other people. This guy had a lot of hands. Actually, no, he was <laughs> like Ayato's underling. Oh, was he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why do we care about Jason? <laughs> yeah, why is Jason so important? I don't know. It's. I guess he's like the only like uh, allusion to horror. Uh, culture in the manga so far I mean, don't get me wrong i think he could have been important i just don't think he was in fact i was um re-watching the well not re-watching the anime but i was i was a couple weeks ago when i was looking for a thumbnail i was skimming through the anime and i did notice a scene with like some dove investigators in like a flashback of sorts um fighting jason and i totally get how like if the story was just a little different and Jason was established earlier, like he like he may have been in the anime, I can't say for sure. I was just skimming, but 
Uh, if, if it was the case that like we saw him killing some people in one of the earlier chapters and like there was more rumors like for, for example the owl is something i specifically noted on because there were rumors of the owl very early on so when the owl did show up as much as i didn't like that fight between the owl and the doves because i wasn't invested i wanted to be invested because of all the rumors surrounding the owl mm -hmm. if there were more room rumors around jason then i totally get why everyone's all like all up on his shit but i just didn't think there was we literally met jason we were told about jason when we met jason so i i just i don't really get the importance that they seem the the, the reverberations that he seems to have on the rest of the characters in the story thus far i don't really follow why i think uh, well okay so i think there's a bit of a disconnect between what the author uh, the mangaka wanted to convey and what he actually did because while reading it like after jason was introduced there were like in as far as it does were concerned he was like a main like uh concern of theirs going into this algiri raid and he did torture kaneki altering his personality and the centipede thing is now like apparently part of his aesthetic so clearly like the author wanted this jason guy to seem important but it felt like we were just speeding through, like, okay, we have to do the Jason stuff now, so. Yeah, I guess I would just classify this as, like, an afterthought, like, or not, not, so it's like, he knew, oh man, it'd be really cool if I set up this Jason guy, and then he did it. But, like, as he was setting it up, he was also introducing him. But, I mean, realistically, you should know that you want to set someone up like from the beginning and that way you could you could really pace it out through, throughout the entire story and and tease who this guy is and then when it's like he's introduced and it's like that's jason oh my god and i just you know i just didn't feel like that was executed all that well i think he like started writing tokyo ghoul and then he watched friday the 13th and he was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far as i know jason is the only like horror icon here like there's no one else is named after her. You know, it's like the binge eater, the gourmet ghoul. Yeah. No one else has like weird movie names or whatever. Exactly. So it's not like a theme. So you know what? I think you might be right. I'm going to put that down on the theory board. <laughs> <laughs> we'll confirm it. Uh, but it seems... Okay, so it may have been... Uh, we said the name for the scythe with Jason, but it may have been 13's Jason, which it seemed like that was the name uh, when I was reading it. And what's hold on? What's what is it? What is the difference? Like 13s is part of the name. Oh, what is uh, but wh okay, because 13s Jason. I, I bring this up because I realized there was a Roman numeral 13 carved into the scythe, and Susie's hairpins shape out the Roman numeral 13. So it's like, okay, they're clearly like they're reinforcing this aesthetic here so am i being am i being told that this her name or sorry his naming jason his naming his scythe jason has nothing to do with the the ghoul jason uh, i'm sure it has is that what you're trying to something to do with it but it's just also has to do with 13 they're trying to combine like the jason and the 13 is like aha is um <laughs> quick question is is his cognate made out of jason or rather, his uh, his his uh, his kink. kink. Yeah, yeah, his kink made out of Jason's Kagane. Uh, he seemed. Uh, he said it was going to be like, okay, this will be my new kink. Uh, they didn't specify it during these volumes, but I, I mean, they didn't contradict it either. So, I guess so. And maybe I would know this if I didn't skim everything. But <laughs> when so, if I were to take, if I were to take. Uh, let's say Kaneki's Kagane and make that into a kink. Would it just, would it just be like wrapping hit a, 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 a skin around my normal weapon? Or would I have a weapon that functions as his Kagane functioned? Okay. They did specify this in like my guy's, uh, introduction. Apparently they can't like, if it was a kink that like transformed, they can't, uh, recreate that, but uh, it did seem as though Mato's kink worked similarly to, you know, um, I don't remember the lady's name, but Hinami's mom's uh, Kagane. So mm. it should be able to retain some function. However, it seems more like they're just weapons. 
Okay. All right. Cause, yeah, I was thinking about like who was the, who was the ghoul who had like Amon's kink, his old kink, where it was just like uh, like a, a a big Q tip. <laughs> like, <laughs> the ghoul. This ghoul was so badass, and you fight him, and then he just like a a Q tip falls out of his ass. <laughs> that's, not, that's not very scary. <laughs> well, it is if it stabs you in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Anyways, where were we? Uh, hmm. Oh, so the guy in charge of the Algeria investigation, Marude, gets uh, some heat from the head chairman. He's under pressure to produce results, and he convenes with some other uh, previously unintroduced investigator, and they go over some details and a new lead they have. Meanwhile, Amon and Akira go to the ghoul prison to speak to an SS ghoul, Donald Peru, uh, Poropora? Yeah, Poropora. Who seems to be Amon's father. Uh, apparently he ran an orphanage. He doesn't really yeah. give them any information. Codename, uh, codename priest for this guy. He was All right. a priest. Uh, and um, I guess... Basically, what we're gathering here is that Amon is an orphan and was raised inside this sort of uh, the confines of of this church, and uh, and then somehow like he he learned that the priest was actually killing all the orphans, and somehow Amon escaped. Um, this is an it may interesting. Have been one I, yeah, this is an interesting idea, but it's sort of. I find the character of priest to not necessarily line up with how I would expect this to play out, which is. I think the idea of giving Amon a family member, not not by blood, but just someone who would have he would have really cared about growing up, giving making them a ghoul gives a really good opportunity for Amon to further sympathize with ghouls. You know, if like if I learned today that my sister was a ghoul, I would really have to question my stance on ghouls because I can't just brush off my sister super easily. But if my sister was also killing people and was like a, a an unforgivable person and was almost an asshole then i probably would be able to just brush her off pretty easy so by making the priest so it sort of seems like they were setting up this opportunity for Amon to sympathize with ghouls further but then they made the priest sort like you know sort of reveling in these murders yeah, he's, and he's kind of a sadistic crimes. asshole but yeah, and because of that, it was very easy for Amon to just be like, I don't think of you as a father, I hate you. So I don't really know what the purpose of creating that connection was at the moment. Well, I think that they were trying to go in a different direction with it, where Amon like, personally had someone quite close to him who ended up being this murderous ghoul, and it cr- like creates this strong imprint of, even, no matter how nice a ghoul seems, they're still a fucking ghoul. They're still gonna murder everyone. I guess. I guess if that was established earlier, I could see that. But I feel like at this point, you don't need to tell me that ghouls are bad. Like you don't need <laughs> to give me reason and reasoning as to why Amon would not like ghouls. I already get it. You yeah. know, I get why he wouldn't like them. I think so if he to were add- do this, he could have just done it when Amon was introduced or mentioned, like he was raised in a ghoul orphanage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think like. As backstory early on, I think it's good motivation, but I already have a different set of motivations that don't need this to function. And what I do think we need right now, or what I would hope we need in, for the, the ending that I'm I'm holding out for, is reason for Amon to sympathize with ghouls. And I think this could have been that, and it just wasn't. Yeah. Anyways. Vader was biting my headphones. So, <clears throat> he uh, doesn't really give them any information, but he gives them this vague hint to pursue Alice instead of the White Rabbit, which uh, he says they both lead to the same destination, which uh, could be a clue that following Kaneki would lead them to Algiri, since he's Wait, following them. He, he says... Following the white rabbit, or following he says, Alice follow Alice. leads, not the white rabbit. They both lead to the same destination. Oh no, that ruins my theory. I was like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> does it? I, okay, so uh, the whole discussion point was going to be who do you think Alice is? Because Amon theorizes that Alice is Kaneki. I I was going to counter that point by saying that 
if Amon figured it out so fast, it probably isn't that. You know, there probably is a little more intrigue to it. So I was going to get like ask you who you thought it was, and my answer was going to be that uh, that it was sort of a cryptic message from his father saying, "Don't follow the don't follow the white rabbit." Or rather, okay, let me clarify. I thought. He sh- he was saying he shouldn't focus on the black rabbit, which is we'll introduce in the who- next scene. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was saying don't focus on the black rabbit because the black rabbit is not the white rabbit who you're looking for because he killed Mato. But if he's saying that, hold on, <laughs> my my theory is getting all confused. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, who do you think Alice is, buddy? <laughs> okay, so I thought um, one would be. Kaneki and one would be Dr. Kano. But I wasn't sure which was which. Like, and I'm also not sure what uh, Wonderland is supposed to be in this analogy. It's it's all super vague. <laughs> do you know what chapter this was? Can I cuz I kind of want to just read what he said specifically. No, I do not. But um I did get the quote. So Oh, right. <laughs> uh, so you have the actual just can you just read the quote to me? I don't have the actual quote, but you I got it. Got- right. <laughs> okay, I, I trust you. I suppose. Um, okay, hold on. Uh, stall for time. I'm just I'm scrolling through the chapters right now. Okay, so hey, have you guys seen Vader? <laughs> he's he's actually doing something. But uh. I was so okay. So obviously dissecting what Alice would lead to be, or would re- uh, rather what Alice could be. Um, you know, through the looking glass. What is that? What does that sort of imply? It, so I'm I'm trying to wonder of like, does the doctor's sort of twisted ideas does that sort of fit alongside the Wonderland of you know like the the doctor's world hmm. of what he's trying to create? Could that be what Wonderland refers to? Maybe. And then I guess so. The question is, he, uh, so we know that Mato is looking for a white rabbit, which we know is Toka. Um, but if 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 the doctor is Right, because Toka's mask is a white rabbit? That's correct? Yes. So if the doctor is Alice, how does following the doctor get to Toka? Uh, hmm. I'm skeptical that Toka is supposed to be either of these, because this is coming from the priest who shouldn't know about Toka, as far as we know. Yeah, but it just it seem doesn't it seem weird to like use like from a from a purely meta narrative standpoint, wouldn't it be weird to use the same iconography for two things <laughs> and then have them not be connected at all? It would be pretty weird, yeah. But I mean, would it not happen? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it wouldn't happen. I mean, <laughs> if I were to guess, I would imagine it not happen. I suppose I don't one hundred percent know, but oh shoot, I just. Well, dang it, I just went full screen on my god dang manga. All right, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I thought, uh, so, okay. Here's my, here was my theory. I don't know if I just debunked my theory or not. I don't know. My theory was the Black Rabbit is Toka's brother. That's what I was getting at here. Oh, I flipped my camera. Hold on one second. Uh, so you guys can read it. Let's flip that. Okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, next theory is Black Rabbit is Toka's brother. Um... I get my my only logic there is that, uh, like I like I was talking about with iconography is because they are siblings, it would make sense that they both go by rabbits, even though we don't know him to be a rabbit before. And I guess I I don't know. I was just I, I I'm thinking that for some reason Toka's brother after the ass whooping he got before would be sort of considering his options and like doubting his current path and maybe by becoming the black rabbit that is sort sort of him embracing his sister's like you know side and maybe having a bit of a change of hearts i don't know if that's accurate at all or Mm. even remotely reasonable but i that is kind of where my theory is being based around right now it as to that, that's who the black rabbit is that's who the black rabbit is not necessarily who alice is so i may be completely fucking up here i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't know it's if i were to guess i would say if donald was informed about anything it would be algiri 
and maybe Dr. Kano's experiments. So I would guess this metaphor has to be, have something to do with uh, either of those two uh, trails. What does the white rabbit... What does the White Rabbit do in Alice in Wonderland? I know he's the reason she gets there. Uh, and then what? She, when we, okay, in the play, she was just, like, chasing the White Rabbit the whole time, trying to find him. I don't remember why. Is, okay, is the White Rabbit... Rize? Oh. It could be. So if Alice is Kaneki, the White Rabbit is Rize. Or, I mean, it could be Dr. Kano and Rize. Okay. I suppose that that's possible. I guess my, my thought was just that, like, if it is about just chasing someone, Kaneki is very, like, not even subtextually. He is he is literally chasing after <laughs> Rize. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think that, I think we just threw out like eight different theories. Um, <laughs> None of them are going. Yeah. On the so I'll <laughs> I'll add I'll add Black Rabbit. I think is is Toka's brother, and then I do think it's weird. I do think it would be really weird to have the White Rabbit not be Toka. But I guess if it's not, my second theory is going to be. Th- this one isn't going on the board because I don't want it on the record because I I don't think it's going to be right. But I I guess the White Rabbit would be Rize, and so off the record on the record that is my guess. Hmm. I guess, uh, if I had to make a guess, it would be that it seems most likely that Kaneki is Alice and, uh, Algiri, well, hmm, now I'm, like, kind of buying into this Rize is the White Rabbit thing. <laughs> <laughs> mm. my record speaks for itself you know my <laughs> reputation and how accurate my predictions tend to be yeah i mean 60 percent's is nothing to scoff at <laughs> it would be so much higher if i didn't guess that motto was a ghoul man if i just didn't guess that it would be it would have been 32 divided by four which would have been oh, what was that? that's eight seven eight yeah would've i would have been 80 percent yeah we should probably take uh Susie is a ghoul off, honestly. I don't think anyone in the CCG is a ghoul, if I'm being honest. I, but <laughs> I can't just take it off. That's cheating. <laughs> just edit the podcast, man. Just edit it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to go back to the old episodes, delete that epi- uh, delete that section out. I think you could do that. I think you could delete sections out of videos that already huh. are up. With, without re-uploading so. them? Yeah, because I think that's what PewDiePie did when he promoted ER, and then everyone was like, Dude, ER is like a alt right, you know. Uh, of course. <laughs> so he was like, ah, shit, and then he just deleted that section out of the video. But I don't think he re-uploaded it. So well, yeah, I think no, I think you can do that. Likes ERs. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um... <laughs> that's, that's a terrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where were we? He just finished talking to his dad. Uh, yeah, but uh, we're back at the CCG. Marude calls in Hide. He's back. Apparently, he's been feeding the CCG information on ghouls. And you know who Hide looks like? Who? Mirio. You think so? I because I was when they didn't reveal that it was Hide, and we just saw this part timer. I was like. Is this a My Hero Academia crossover yeah. happening right now? I, I swear to God, I thought it was Mirio. Yeah. And even when they when they showed his face, I was still like, that could be Mirio. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just a random thought I had. I didn't really make the connection. I guess I see... I think of Mirio as, like, this fucking swole boy. Whereas, you know, he'd, uh, he, he could look like I, a younger Mirio. I don't really identify Mirio by his body, but rather just having that Lucas head. <laughs> he does got so. the Lucas head going. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> he explains that he investigates suspicious people in his spare time, and that one of them just happened to be Jason. In a flashback, we see him put a tracker on in his shoe that uh, Susia found on his corpse. This is what I figured out when I reread the chapters, because it was a chapter where uh, uh, Yamori died. And Susie found the little tracker on the bottom of his shoe. So, <clears throat> oh wow, I didn't catch that. Yeah, he calls in Amon and Akira, and tells them to take Hide with them on this uh, case they got going. So we finally get back to Antiku. There's a new girl talking to Nishiki, and uh, 
their gossip basically confirms that Kaneki killed the ghoul restaurant. And she also seems to have a crush on Kaneki. Ooh. She apparently came over from the 19th Ward to uh, meet this boy. And she's like, wow, did Kaneki really work here? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, he worked here. <laughs> this chapter, remind, or this little scene here, reminded me of... Or rather, really brought to attention the fact that Nishiki has no purpose in the story right now. And I'm just <laughs> really true. confused as to why. Because if we go with the whole Vegeta example or, you know, whatever, just like that, that uh, the uh, opponent turned ally, that totally worked for the, <clears throat> the when they had to save Kaneki. But then Kaneki decided to leave the cafe and not take anyone or not take Nishiki with him. So now Nishiki just works at the cafe by himself. <laughs> <laughs> like, why is he here? What is the point of this character now? <laughs> Actually, I said he would be the TN character, which is even more accurate, because when Vegeta shows up, Vegeta in this case being gourmet, there's just no more TN anymore. <laughs> so, it all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I... I I guess, I don't know. It just, I, I, I think about the story and I think about how, what I wanted it to be going in and how it's not really shaping up. And I'll talk about this more in general thoughts, but I do think about how I would change it to be what I wanted it to be. And I do think, you know, unless Nishiki comes around in these next 40 chapters and has some really important piece of the plot, I think you could just cut Nishiki out of the story entirely. <laughs> like, I don't really. Yeah, he, I mean, he didn't add that much. Well. I, I like the dynamic between him and his girlfriend, and I do think there is some, you know, thematic importance in the idea of bridging between ghouls and humans to have someone, you know, have these two dating each other, ghoul and human. I do think there's importance there, but I just, I don't know. In, in, in the idea of trying to shorten the story and save time, I don't really see why Nishiki is all that necessary. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems like, like you said, he has no relevance to, to the story right now but and he didn't really even do anything during the retrieval like of Kaneki I mean he, true. he was certainly he was certainly there but uh, I find myself thinking none of none of them really did that much I and mean, Kaneki <laughs> kind of left there by himself yeah Kaneki pretty much broke out on his own while the doves were invading and uh, Ante Iku was there I guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I guess it gave him a reason to beat the shit out of Ayato so that's cool so, uh, where were we? Oh. Next, we see some uh, unknown characters impatiently waiting in a bar, and Kaneki shows up with the gourmet ghoul and banjo. So, Sukiyama details that among the Kokuria escapees were 37 A level ghouls, 5 S level ghouls, and 3 double S level ghouls. This group seems to want to find a particular ghoul named Shachi, and they're like, well, he's probably A level. I mean, is statistically it's most likely? I mean, how unlikely would it be that he was S level or double S level? It obviously how wrong they were. <laughs> that's a red flag. What I like. Well, he's probably weak. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think these these characters, like Shachi's underlings, are high on the list of characters introduced here that I want to cut out immediately. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. We have two... Do they do anything through the rest of these volumes? They come back. Well, they come back because Kaneki explains that Chachi is, like, you know, not not an ally anymore. But it's just like, dude, we have so many new characters. These guys don't... They're not needed. <laughs> cut them out. Yeah, you could have just brought listen. Nishiki instead of having these three new people. There's more story to be told, you know, like there is, these guys could become important, but the, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's <laughs> just fucking stop introducing so many characters, please. <laughs> Part of That's why I'm skimming. Come with the knowledge that we're like only uh, t two or three volumes away or two or three episodes away from the end of the manga entirely. So it just seems like a weird time to be adding in these extraneous characters who maybe might be important later, but seemingly yeah. have no reason to exist at the moment. Exactly. So. And I, well, I guess, is is there more Tokyo Ghoul? I know there is more, but like, is the rest of Tokyo Ghoul a straight up continuation of this? Or, uh, I looks like there's, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know either. So Kaneki's interested in Shachi because his last name is Kamishiro, the same as Rize's last name. 
he seems to want to find out who she is, and, you know, this is why he's trying to find this guy. He also slaughtered all the restaurant ghouls in his search for Dr. Kano. So right now, those are the two people he's looking for. Tsukiyama ex- suspected that Dr. Kano might be involved in experimenting on Madame A's pet humans. And sure enough, Kaneki encountered two uh, one-eyed ghouls when protecting her when he killed everybody there. So, yeah, seems like that was a good lead. <laughs> uh he visits Itori for some information on Kano when Nico uh, shows up. Apparently, they're buddies. <laughs> he claims he's not actually part of Algiri, and Kaneki doesn't buy it. He's literally like, how am I going to kill this guy? <laughs> and Itori uh, is covering for him, <laughs> according to Nico. <laughs> and I've noticed there's a lot of... Uh... Let's, let's say homophobic language in this manga. I think they've dropped the F word multiple times. Yeah. And then she's just like, yeah, he's a homo. You know? Like, don't mind him. Like, it's like, what is happening? It's true, but you shouldn't say it. <laughs> the, the translation I'm reading literally had like a, a page before the manga started saying like, hey, listen, yeah. we're just trying to be accurate. Here. Yeah. We, yeah. This is, this I saw that page <laughs> <laughs> like this is not our words. This is the manga saying this. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, we gotta be more it is woke just on like, the side of the pod. It is. It is just f- colorful language. It's not like I don't know. It's not like super important to the plot or anything. It's just it's, you yeah. know random insults. Yeah, there's there just is a gay guy. And they're like this fucking homo. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. <clears throat> Where were we? All right. Uh, according to Nico, according to Yamori, capturing Kana or Rize was a big priority of Algiri, which is probably why they went after Kaneki. And, you know, it seems like they have some aligning interests, maybe why Kaneki seems to want to uh, investigate Algiri as well. He even tells him who the One-Eyed Owl is. Oh, wait. Was it the One-Eyed Rather, Owl? Uh, yeah, so... This is a big thing in why I personally was not able to, um, you know, figure out the, the thing we were supposed to figure out last week. And why it just it, why I don't think it was that obvious is because apparently the one eyed owl and the one eyed king are different people. I did not know this. I had no way of knowing this. Hmm. You gave them both the same tree. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> How many one eyed characters are you going to fucking introduce? God damn. And when you're going to say that, like, the fact that they are one-eyed is, like, a big deal, then I'm connecting them, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm connecting that the one-eyed owl is probably the one-eyed king, and I don't, I guess I'm wrong, but can you fucking blame me? You know, that's why I didn't piece it together, Imagine and I'm sorry. the big reveal at the end is that the one-eyed owl is the one-eyed king. Oh my god, I'm going to shame myself with the goddamn <laughs> Yeah, I'd be bad too. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, he tells him who the One-Eyed King is, um, but, of course, we're not privy to that information. Uh, so, someone wearing a rabbit mask and uh, using a one wing kagude is killing doves, but this mask is black. Oh. Yeah. This is my Toka's brother theory. Because, <laughs> um, you know, same kagune, and technically Toka's brother has two, but if he... Oh, you know what I mean? You know what he might be doing then? Maybe this is Toka's brother trying to frame his sister? But then why not just wear a white mask? <laughs> well, he doesn't actually know, because he never saw her with the rabbit mask, as far as we know. Hmm. So, okay. All right. But so, they, okay. the doves just... are treating it as the same ghoul. And, okay, is Hide the one who says that, like, it's probably not, though? Yes, that was uh, Hide's contribution. Which makes me think it's probably not, but it's if it if it's not Toka, uh, it is not Ayato. Yeah, who who the fuck is? <laughs> if we get introduced to another character, <laughs> it's Toka's sister. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> is it definitely a? Um, they s- what if it's like- okay. This person has an extremely similar kink to Toka, like more similar than Ayato's, honestly. Maybe it's her dad. Is her dad not dead? Uh, Mato killed him. M- wait, Mato killed. Yeah, Mato killed. Her dad took his dad. 
Oh, I didn't. I must have forgotten that. Oh, uh, well, I do know. I do know that her dad was dead. I just didn't realize it was Motto. Uh, maybe he's just back though. <laughs> I don't <laughs> that know. That could be it. I, I don't. Uh, Jojo broke I don't know our trust. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So Kaneki and his group decide to go back to the 20th Ward just in time for Toka's birthday. Uh, they talk to, <clears throat> well, Kaneki's there to talk to the nurse from the hospital he was in. And she tells them that uh, Dr. Kano was in Germany, which Kaneki knows isn't true. So he's like, either Dr. Kano's lying to her or she's lying to us. It's the latter because she calls him as soon as they leave. And uh, we see him in this dark lab with a female assistant. There's this dude bleeding from his orifices in a pod. And also, Rise is there. Uh, seems like he's regenerating and harvesting her kakuhos to inject into people and make ghouls. Which, ew. Uh, back to the doves. <laughs> uh, Aman, Akira, and Tide are discussing the rabbit. This is where he makes his uh, suggestion that it's probably someone else because he remembers the daughter case. And at the time, he thought... Uh, the rabbit was uh, avenging the daughter's mother. So he's like, this is probably someone else. And uh, Akira points out that Hide is quite interested in ghouls, which made me think of, a f- of the fact that the first and only girl he's shown interest in was a ghoul. It was Toka, before we even knew she was a ghoul. That is that is accurate. <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah, suspicious. Shinohara and Suzia show up. He informs them that uh, he has a new theory about the binge eater, which happens to be entirely correct, of course. He suspects that the binge eater was killed in a, uh, that steel beams accident in the 20th Ward that got a lot of press. And <clears throat> he found out that both the doctor who used that girl's organs and the boy who had the transplant are seemingly missing. Hmm. Hide... Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. you know, I was rereading, uh, just a quick pause. I was rereading some of the comments from previous episodes. And when it was, when we brought up the fact that, like, it is weird that Kaneki knows and doesn't really do anything with that information, or rather, uh, uh, Hide knows that Kaneki is a ghoul and doesn't do anything with that information. Um, someone, I think it was one responded that, like, it, it does pay off. Like, it totally does pay off. So my question is, wait, once ahead how of do us? you think? It, how do you how do you think it pays off? You know, like, because uh, hmm. I, mean, I don't know, because it, it, to to tie into what we've just read, it does seem like an even stronger opportunity for Hide to say something. You know, they basically say, "Isn't it interesting that this guy could be a ghoul?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it seems like a good moment for him to be like, "Whoa." He is a ghoul. <laughs> or, or maybe just be like, maybe specifically say that he's not a ghoul, which tells us that Hide is on Kaneki's side here. But I think this that is might like be such why huge... they didn't show the rest of the scene, because he speaks up. In, you know, contextually, we know that he said Kaneki's his friend, but we don't know what he said. So I guess the question I would have then is if Hide is saying that he's not a ghoul, why is Hide working for the CCG, helping them... Like, there's no way he knows the nuances of Kaneki's goals, so he can't be like, I'm going to join the CCG so I can help Kaneki do what he wants to do and just, you know, sort of play from the inside because he doesn't know what Kaneki wants to do. So he he's basically, as far as he knows, hurting Kaneki by working for the CCG. So if he's going to be hurting Kaneki, why is he not just, you know, turning Kaneki in? I think uh, this is... Uh... If I had to put some probability on this and just assign a random number as people do, I'd say this is a 60% chance of being true that uh, Hide is joining the CCG to use their resources to find Kaneki and because he knows he's a ghoul, he wants to join the ghoul side, but he wants to go through a friend. Mm. Oh, is this part of your Hide is a ghoul theory or like a... This is a or this is a separate theory because if Hide is a ghoul, he's already on the ghoul side. Yeah, so I guess I guess this is like a branch off where it's like if Hide if Hide isn't a ghoul, he wants to be a ghoul. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, it's <laughs> so a little roundabout. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm covering all, right. all my ghoul bases. All right. 
<laughs> and you know what? I'll tag on this theory that Hide doesn't want to be a ghoul. Now we've really covered all the options, so one of us has to be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's a good system. <laughs> Consistently batting 50% because we just guess every option. But never being wrong. <laughs> Anyways. So yeah. Uh, <clears throat> meanwhile, Kaneki is trying to kidnap and interrogate that nurse with some of the boys. When she gets kidnapped and interrogated by some other ghouls. Uh, they jump in. Apparently these ghouls are Algiri. And one of them is Yaomi's, uh, Yamori's fanboy. He says he wanted Yamori to torture him when he got out of lockup, but he kind of killed him, so now he's got a grudge. Then this uh, huge jacked man call- jumps in. This is apparently Shachi. He's a big buff martial arts dude. I don't know why they thought he was weak. <laughs> he yeah. attacks, and Kaneki goes to block, so he just breaks his freaking elbows with an uppercut. Oh, was it an uppercut or a kick? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Then he just <laughs> like, knocks him into the ground with the hammer fist move. And uh, Kaneki like, pulls out his Kagane, attacks, and leads him into the air so he can stab him. And he just like cuts Kaneki's Kagane, uh, Kagane off. Start saying that five times fast. Then uh, punches him in the ribs so hard that he vomits blood into his mask. It's... Yucky. <laughs> this Kaneki basically soloed a hundred ghouls, and now he's getting fucking one shot by this dude. So yeah, I guess is is this the most powerful ghoul we've ever seen? Because I mean, obviously we don't know the like the upper limits of the owl, but like he's clearly. I have a hard time him, imagining like, how Sukiyama. Shachi would be beaten. Well, it is kind of. I said he's clearly stronger than like Sukiyama, but it's kind of hard to say because. Kaneki does sort of get back at this guy. Like, it's not... Yeah, but... He never starts winning, but... Well, he he specifically calls Shachi out in that fight as saying, like, why are you holding back? Uh, so... That is true, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we we still don't know his upper limit, but... Hard to say. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Like I don't we don't know who this guy well, I, we we might know we might know who this guy is because at the end of uh, uh an upcoming chapter, he basically he basically just confirms that he is Rize's father. Um does uh, not have yeah. Rize's Kagane though. Or does he? Does he have like a similar Kagane? Um No, because Kaneki has Rize's Kagane. No, I don't mean literally. Like do they have like the same type of Kagane? Like is it similar? Uh they are both tails. Okay. So, I, yeah. Okay. Well, we know Rize is really powerful. So, I guess, by extension, it makes sense that her father would be also very powerful. That is true. Uh, <clears throat> honestly, I when I was reading this, I didn't think he was Rize's dad. But, I mean, he, he does call her his daughter. So, that's pretty... Pretty solid evidence. Yeah, there, there's some. There is some questions about like the fact that Rize is not her actual name. So why does he have her name? Because if unless it's, they're like both messing up their names, so yeah, they, maybe they change their names together. Who knows? But yeah, whatever. There's something we don't quite know about their relationship yet. So, <clears throat> uh, he they call their boss to see if they should kill Kaneki, but they just take the girl and go and. Kaneki, he's pretty upset about getting cucked like that, so they go to track down Madame A and ambush her, basically. But her bodyguard, like, sees it coming, tries to run with her, and this is where Hinami, uh, Hinami shows off her skills. She's actually useful now. She's, like, watching from a vantage point and coordinates the movements of their group to corner her, and at when this happens, the bodyguard pretty much just ditches Madame A, and Kaneki starts questioning her. Oh, I should probably mention that he has a line where he says, uh, do you know what it's, what it sounds like when a live centipede goes in your ear? Yeah, that, that's clearly fucked with him like, <laughs> a lot, yeah. which I guess it fucked with me too, <laughs> but I don't know if it fucked with me more than everything else that happened. You know, like why, why, why say the centipede? Why not just be like, 
You know, it's like to have your chose, uh, your chose, your your toes chopped off and then have them regrown and then chopped off again. Like that was pretty bad too, in my opinion. Well, that's bad in reality, but that doesn't sound as scary. Also, the centipede was like, like a poisonous centipede, so uh, that would have been pretty rough. <laughs> Probably worse than the toe yeah. thing. But I don't know. <clears throat> the now there's trouble at Antiku. Shinohara and Suzia show up following Kaneki's trail, and they start questioning people. Well, while eating, of course. They ask uh, Toka and Yoshi about Kaneki and leave. And Shinohara ends up getting pretty suspicious about Yoshimura. So, hmm, I wonder how that's gonna play out. The ghoul group from Algiri, inter- they interrogate the girl and presumably get something useful. The doves are investigating Kano. Uh, he went from the GFG, the German CCG, to the actual CCG, where he was a coroner. And then he started working in his father's hospital, where everybody loved him, and he uh, harvested some organs from a ghoul and made ghoul humans. <laughs> they don't know all when that. Was the last time, when was the last time you've rewatched Scrubs? Uh, that is a good question. It's been years. That's a good show. <laughs> I can, I can, I can do definitely. It all on my own. I was just thinking about like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about like working in a hospital. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good show. If you guys haven't seen Scrubs, it's a. I mean, it's not like it's not like amazing or anything, but it's it's a good show to just have on while you're like, you know, chilling, hanging out with friends, maybe. Yeah, yeah, definitely a solid watch. But back to Tokyo Ghouls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, of course. <laughs> they. Uh, find some real estate of Dr. Kano's that is suspicious in size and uh, purpose-wise. Meanwhile, Kaneki's training, even uh, going so far as to ask Tsukiyama for help, and <clears throat> the they go to check out Kano's mansion. Kaneki finds a picture of the two, gir- the two girls he fought, so it's uh, kind of weird. They also find a secret underground tunnel with walls that seem to be made of flesh, Sukiyama explains that they're called RC walls that open up in response to Kagane. It's ghoul technology, baby. And Kano is watching them through uh, cameras he had installed throughout the place. So it's like, okay, what's this? Uh, why are these ghoul walls in Kano's office? Uh, unless he like reverse engineered the technology, he has to be in league with some ghouls. So, <clears throat> uh. He sends his uh, half ghoul girls to kill Kaneki's group, and when they find them, Kaneki just sort of flips right past him and tells uh, his henchmen to handle it, which is pretty much just See putting ya. it all on uh, the gourmet <laughs> ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Banjo. <laughs> yeah, listen, it, he's cool, but he's not very good in a fight. And as they're scrapping, the Algiri ghouls show up again, and Shachi once again encounters Kaneki. He immediately tries to uppercut and axe kick him in quick succession, but Kaneki just sort of narrowly dodges each blow. Uh, he tries to poke uh, Sachi's eyes out with the, his fingers, but he fucking breaks his fingers by headbutting them. Uh, Kaneki f- flicks him back into place, uh, brings out his Kagade, attacks Shachi, and, you know, hits him with his own backflip and slash him with a tail move, then throws him through a steel wall, which is at least a foot thick. And he starts slashing him up. Meanwhile, uh, Krona and Nashiro, which are the two ghoul girls, are being toyed with by this Algiri ghoul we don't know. He's like teleporting behind them and taunting them with uh, like monologues about how their dad doesn't actually care about them and he's just manipulating them and he's not even their real father. And they're like, hey, shut up. <laughs> and the question is, who the fuck is this guy? Like, yeah, like, how do you know? <laughs> It's just, it's another character, man. It's another character, and I don't get it. I don't get why. Hmm. Okay, I just had an interesting thought about Shachi that we'll we'll get to when we get to it. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Banjo looks over at the, the ghoul fight, and he, suddenly the ghoul's right behind him, and he's like, hey, you dropped this. Bajo looks down at the ghoul's hands. He's like, why are you holding my ribcage? And he <laughs> falls over. And 
we go back to the Shachi fight. He grabs Kaneki by the face when he, like, moves in to finish him off and uh, throws him through the floor into this huge lab that Kano's in. And <clears throat> uh, Rize is also there. She's, like, hooked up to these... Uh, I don't know things. <laughs> it's it's some science shit. Man. Yeah, he's got some science <laughs> shit going on. <laughs> and <clears throat> he calls Kaneki his greatest creation. This is Doctor Kano speaking. He vaguely explains <laughs> having. Hello, Doctor Kano. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> he vaguely explains uh, having some big ambitions. Uh, you seem to have pieced together that he wants to okay the metaphor he uses is breaking free from a bird cage and he wants to do this by uh making ghouls turning humans into ghouls yeah i i, I just maybe maybe i over assumed but i assumed he was just saying that like humans have reached their capacity and then to evolve to the next stage we need to become ghouls that's why i thought he meant but i suppose but then maybe I if over-assumed. all the humans become ghouls what are the ghouls gonna eat dum dum <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Okay. <laughs> Check, checkmate. And then that's what Kaneki says. And then the doctor's like, oh, shit. You're right. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> He's like, fuck, abort, abort. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Here's the thought I had. It seems as though uh, Shachi and Kano are uh, in league. They know each other somehow. And Shachi explains that... Uh, he gives a slight bit of his own backstory and explains that he trained his uh, martial arts in the human world and then uh, he trained his body as a ghoul. And to me, this doesn't. This could hint at him having not been a natural ghoul. So he may have been working with uh, this Dr. Kano character a long ass time ago. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. That's that possible. Put that on the board. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you want me to summarize that in just a couple words? What should I write? Uh, <clears throat> hmm. Shachi wants human. Shachi wants human. Oh, fuck. I didn't leave enough room to put a score under the black rabbit. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, Shachi wants human on the board. Nice. So, yeah, he, Dr. Kano's uh, going on this monologue. He claims he saved Kaneki's life. And Kaneki's like, fuck this life. Fuck you. This sucks. And Kano asks Kaneki to... He has a point. Yeah, it does. I mean, he got fucking tor- <laughs> he, his toes were His toes were chopped off repeatedly. That wouldn't happen to a human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, with a human, once, maximum. But <laughs> <laughs> It's like, damn, that sucks. But it's not like 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he uh, invites Kaneki to come join Algiri with him. And when he refuses, he tells him that Yoshimura actually created Algiri. He's like, what? Kind of. That is a that is a white moment. That, like... <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> Kano offers to show him the true form of this world. Again, speaking in riddles, and <clears throat> Yomo fucking shows up out of nowhere, breaks the case, grabs Rize, is like, oh, sup, Kaneki, and dips. <laughs> 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 and to make matters worse, the devs show up. Uh, Shachi grabs Kano and leaves, but first he, uh, uh, Kano lets out a bunch of experimental subjects who start trying to eat Kaneki, and he, uh, returns the favor. And Suzia runs into Koro and Shiro. Apparently they know each other, and he, they call him Ray, and he's like, actually it's, uh, Suzia now. He's like, uh, okay. <laughs> and then he, he seems pretty happy to kill them. Uh... Yeah, this uh, this paints a pretty clear picture because they talked earlier about like uh, when when they were sh- talking about who this house belonged to before and who these twins were. They talk about the idea of, like what happens to the children of uh, people who get killed by ghouls, and basically what they say is they go to the CCG orphanage to oh. you know what I just put something together. What'd you put together? I think 
when uh, Dr. Kano was working at the CCG, he snuck these girls out of the orphanage. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and that's probably that's... where they know uh, Susie are from, because he's also at the orphanage, presumably. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what I was getting at. Basically, uh, what we what we could piece together is that uh, they, go, they go to the CCG orphanage to become ghoul investigators, like, from an early age, which, which would explain why Juzo knows and is, like, so talented, despite being so young. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I because I'm being – because there's points on the line, I'm not going to make this theory. But I do think there could be something more to the fact that these people know each other. It is it is simply explained by them all probably just having been part of the orphanage. But, you know, there could be a little deeper. I don't know. My theory was that they could be related. Like, that they they had a brother that – they just didn't talk about, but hmm. you know that that's that's a crazy theory. I don't think it's true, <laughs> but if it is true, that's going as a plus ten on the board. <laughs> but if it's not true, it's not going on the board. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how we cheat the system. <laughs> so here's what I find odd: uh, Susia has this other name, but uh, the priest called Amon, you know, Amon. So it's like he's presumably also went through the CCG orphanage after going out of, getting out of this orphanage so it's like he became a ghoul investigator and didn't have to change his name so there is some other yeah. reason why Susia would have had to change his name yeah Juza, uh, Susia Juza whatever the fuck you want to call him does have some sort of there is another layer here we just don't know what it is so while there is a simple explanation for how these three know each other there is there there is also something else and I don't know we don't know what that is quite yet yeah the, we'll, we'll see what's going on with the boy so, Amon and Akira find Gourmet and Naki, and they, like, stop fighting to fend off the doves. And Shinohara finds Kaneki, whose Kakune now looks like a centipede, and he attacks him and his uh, support forces. And that's the end of this volume. Oh boy, we did it. Alright, let's head into general thoughts, because I'm trying to be done with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> How long is this episode? I have not been checking. Uh, oh. We are at 116 right now. Hmm. Um, all right, general thoughts. I'll go ahead and start us off. You know, it's a bit tricky because, um, you know, part of the thing I'm struggling to do right now is divorce myself of what I want, what I thought the story was going to be, because clearly that is coloring my expectations and sort of hampering my enjoyment of the series. Um, so I am trying to push that aside. I cannot 100% divorce myself of it, but I'm trying. And in trying, I guess I'm 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 okay with where the story is going right now. I'm okay with these these volumes in line with that. But you know, I do like my idea more. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's not that I think it's a better idea, but it's just one that I would enjoy more personally. So I don't know. It's hard. I'm trying to be accepting, but yeah, there's always going to be that. As for things I straight up just don't like, even r- disregarding that, um, I do think there's way too many characters. Like, holy shit, are we introducing so many fucking characters? It's 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 so hard to follow along, to be 100% honest. Um, mm-hmm. And I do miss Toka. And uh, I think, you know, we we do get her a b- like a bit. We do, we do see what's going on with her life, but I don't really get why Kaneki thinks he has the authority to be like, I'm trying to separate Toka from this world when Toka has lived in this world her entire <laughs> life and you've been here for six months. Yeah, like, shut the fuck up, kid. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't. I don't like this authority that Kaneki seems to be exercising over Toka, and I wish she was a part of the story. So... Uh, those are those are my general complaints and my general thoughts on the uh, these two volumes. <clears throat> so, going into this, I thought that the whole ghoul thing was just the gimmick for this battle shonen, which uh, you know my expectations have shifted since then, obviously. But it is like I thought this was going to be mostly ghoul on ghoul combat, and since Kaneki's main focuses are tracking down uh, Rize's identity and Agiri, uh, and since and like Dr. Kano, and since Dr. Kano has uh, gone to Agiri, uh, it's uh, it seems like, you know, the, the ghoul versus ghoul conflict is like the main plot uh, thread. However, yeah. we are also getting some uh, cool side stuff that I never really expected with the, the dove investigators. Like, I never expected humans to be a real threat to ghouls in this world, but... Hey, we are the we kind of are, and I like that. <laughs> so yeah, 
I'm actually pretty keen on these two volumes, and I might even say they're probably the most entertaining we've read so far. Yeah, I think the big takeaway here is that, like, we where the story is right now is closer to what you expected it to be. And because of that, you're enjoying it. It's the furthest we've been away from what I was expecting it to be. Now, I already said that the last two volumes were probably my least favorite. And because I'm trying to get away my my expectations, I am more accepting of these. But the reason why I'm so lukewarm to like cold on this is because of those expectations. That's where you didn't have those. Yeah. So pretty easily, uh, you know, explained away right there. Um, yeah, all in all, that's Tokyo Ghoul, ain't it? <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> and we'll be back with more. All right. That's going to do it for this week's training arc. If you're watching this on YouTube, head on over to patreon.com slash KatoYT and consider pledging to get the next episode early. Otherwise, we will see you in a week with two more volumes of Tokyo Ghoul. Bye.